Um, but something we haven't talked about is degeneracy. Okay. When we talk about degeneracy, what do we mean by degenerate again? Uh, same energy, different wave functions, right? So uh, in the case of particle on a ring, we can have different uh, degenerate wave functions, and we need to try to determine those. So as an example, let's determine the energy for a particle on a ring ML will do A, ML is equal to negative 1, and B, M sub L is equal to positive 1. Over break, or hopefully sometime before the Quizlet, you needed to derive an expression for the energy. Does anybody know what the energy of this system will be? Yep, M sub L. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Crappy handwriting. That's meant to be an L. Yep. Yep. Right. Okay. If we have an M sub L value equal to 1, what's that going to work out to be? Yep. What about E, or well, when ML is equal to negative 1? Yeah. So we get the same result. What does that mean? Yep, they're degenerate. They'll have different wave functions. So if you check out uh, the, the different wave functions we looked at last time, you can see that they're different. But the energies will result in the same thing. What makes, mathematically, what in here makes it so that those things are degenerate? Yeah, this square right here basically ensures the absolute value Whenever you look at different ML values that, you know, their absolute values match, you're going to run into a degenerate system. So let's try plotting this. Along our y-axis, we're going to have energy increasing. Our x-axis is just going to have the energetic states. Looking at the mathematics here, what is the lowest value of E that we can have? Yep, it'll be a zero. And what's the m sub l value at that point? Yep. Okay, what's going to come next? Yeah. Negative one and plus one. So this is this state is doubly degenerate. What about the next energy value? Yep, ML will be 2 and negative 2, right? What will the energy be? Yep, so I'm going to draw this as best as I can. 
yeah, we could reduce it down if we wanted to, but I want to leave it that way. And Ellen, what did you say the M sub L values were? Yep. Okay. What do you notice about the spacing? Yeah, the spacing is increasing and it's exponential. Increasing I feel like a basketball player with how much my shoes are squeaky. Watched a lot of March Madness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all my family. My older brother was like screaming at the TV because he was gambling on a game and it's close. He had one and one. Horrible, horrible spot to have. It was almost there. Anyways, <laughs> let's think back to the different quantum systems we've looked at so far. So what are the, the model systems we've considered so far? One D particle in a box. What else do we got? 3D and 2D, right? What other systems? Particle on a ring. We'll, we'll worry about that one in a minute. Uh, what else? The one where I do this hand signal all the time. Totally didn't help anybody, apparently. <laughs> oh, that's what particle in a box kind of is. Harmonic oscillator, and then there's one more that we talked about a lot. Had to deal with tunneling. I'll get you to that one. Particle, particle against a finite potential. So what we have, I didn't count all the way. Math, we'll say it was five, six. What other one follows this sort of pattern? That's a type of question that you would see on an ACS exam. So looking at the energy expressions that you have for all these other systems, which other one increases with the spacing? Harmonic oscillator. What do you know about the spacing in that one? Yep, equal to one another. We're not going to worry about particle against a finite potential. So what's really our only other option? Yep. So it's similar to particle in a box. So the spacing is going to grow with that um, ML value. Okay, that's really all I wanted to talk about for a particle traveling in a circle.